Hey YouTubers, it's me, Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. Obviously, I'm being influenced again by the artist, Young Paris, so I'm going to finish reading. Uh, Human Radiation Studies, Remembering the Early Years, Oral History of Dr. John W. Goffman, MD, PhD, conducted December 20th, 1994, United States Department of Energy, Office of Human Radiation Experiments, June 1995. Wow. And we finished the readings, as you recall, a couple weeks ago, uh, really before the floor fell out from under us. Uh, message from Dr. John Goffman. I'll take this off. Page A. <clears throat> Supplement to the oral history of John W. Goffman, March 20th, 1995. An overview in retrospect of the 1945 plus human radiation experiments. It is my opinion, based upon some major studies I have accomplished in the past year, that it is a grave mistake to consider human radiation experiments as a phenomenon peculiar to the advent of large scale atomic energy. In fact, the real significant events were in 1895. Rotogen's discovery of the X ray in 1898, the Curie's discovery of radium. The true era of massive human radiation experimentation began very shortly after Rotogen's work, and by, the, and by the 1940 to 1945 period, all the features were in a place that were assured we would have precisely what has been found to have been the case in the post-1945 period. Let me read that again. The true era of massive human radiation experimentation began very shortly after Rodigen's work, and by the 1940 to 1945 period, all the features were in place that assured, and assured is in all caps, we would have precisely what has been found to have been the case in the post-1945 period. But there really was nothing special about the human experimentation beginning after 1945. Two major facts of life which must be conceded here. One, humans in recent decades, the last couple of hundred years, operate on a technological imperative. Whatever is discovered must be applied immediately. There has been no thought until recently about disaster creep, which disaster creep is also in all caps, which can occur as a result of looking only at the short term, at the short span of time for consequences of exposure to new technologies. And number two, a special example of disaster creep is the inordinately long latent period before the full flowering of cancers following exposure to carcinogens such as ionizing radiation. The time is clearly at least 50 years and it may really be 60 or more years. The result. The bulk of cancers from x-ray and radium gamma rays simply were not seen partly because of the long latency and partly because the idea that long-term follow-up was essential was clearly dismissed in the first half century after the rotogen, after the rotogen discovery. The false conclusion. Doses of 200, 400, 600, and even over a thousand rotogens of exposure to partial body radiation were erroneously exonerated as cancer producers. Millions of cancers were set in motion in the populations receiving ionizing radiation in the half century before the A-bomb. Wow. That's why all the old people die of cancer, eh? Bastards. Page B. <clears throat> And this set the stage for all the events recently receiving notice. How? Radiation below 500 to 1,000 rotogens of exposure was ridiculed as being of no consequence by failure to look at the follow-up of persons exposed. 
When the post-Hiroshima era post-Hiroshima era resulted in the in the massive atomic energy bureaucracy with all the biases built in from 50 years of having missed the boat concerning cancer production this sentence all of this is in large caps now who was put in charge of the program on health effects the very people who had a total bias in favor of no problem from no lo from low dose radiation look at look at this i'm going to show you that because that is kind of stunning he really wanted us to get that message shocking isn't it who was put in charge of the program on health effects the very people who had a bias in favor of no problem with low dose radiation although there there should have been more thoughtfulness over the uranium miners and dial painters Somehow the idea became accepted that beta particles and electromagnetic radiation simply had shown themselves not to be a worry. Alpha particles, grudgingly, yes. Not that these people were correct. They were not. But I am describing the atmosphere in which these individuals came to be the dominant forces in setting up the post-era of biology and medicine of irradiation. The bias was overwhelming, and with their short-sighted look at the problem, it seemed as though they really believed there was no harm. That there was early post, that was the early phase post-war, but once the bureaucracy was set up and the movers and shakers were told no problem with health issues, the door was opened wide for all sorts of proposals from nuclear power, massive uses of radionuclides in medicine and elsewhere, and even in the plowshare ideas. This set up a new phase. One of the biologists had told the high moguls there was no problem with health effects. All kinds of wheels were in motion, and from there on out, the biomedical people had to, tr had to try to have biology conform to their erroneous view with what the real issue was. And all hell would break loose if the moguls had been embarrassed by the poor biological guidance from the inept biomedical community. And that community, seeing this golden goose of un unlimited funds for research and grants, simply was not in any mood to say, go slow, or that our priority gu prior guidance was wrong. We are now slowly coming off that erroneous mountain. But because so much prestige and so much funding have gone into the enterprise, the easiest path is denial that any problem exists at doses of a few rats. After all, these same people, just a couple of decades earlier, were telling Congress and the public that 500 to 1,000 rats were safe, safe exposures. I have recently found even more evidence that this was pr the prevailing view of the bureaucratic top. There is a fundamental rule that exposing persons to a potential poison with an assurance of safety when that cannot be assured is fraudulent. Let's say that again. There is a fundamental rule that exposing persons to a, a potential poison with an assurance of safety when that cannot be assured is fraudulent. At the very least, this constitutes human experimentation with its Nuremberg connotations. Such experimentation is commonplace today, with so-called safe standards being set for, quote, tolerance, unquote, doses. The idea of safe doses was much, much more in error for the 50-year period before the atomic bomb. Now, we can go into the oral history. But I think failure to appreciate the 50 years before the A-bomb completely confuses the persons looking into the ethics of so-called, quote, human experimentation, unquote. The outcome was cradled, and was cradled is in all caps. The outcome was cradled long before the post-bomb period and was an inevitable expectation. End of prologue. 
I have felt these conclusions needed to be here. They have resulted from an in-depth, year-long investigation of the extent of which ionizing radiation, primarily medical x-rays and radium gamma rays, account for the current level of breast cancers. We estimate that 75% of all breast cancers were and are induced primarily by medical irradiation. Most of that was in the horrendous use of fluoroscopy and the equally questionable uses of radiation in the therapy of benign diseases, from dermatologists to rheumatologists. There is some real human experimentation. John W. Goffman, MD, PhD, March 20th, 1995. Wow. So, just a few days after today, what, 27 years ago. Wow, wow. 37 years ago. So that really is the end of it, guys, because at the end now there's the... Uh, hmm. What does this say? Footnotes. This has all the footnotes. So has all the footnotes. I'm not going to read them to you, but it's pretty interesting. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching this whole video and um, put your courage feet on because we need it. It's beginning to affect us. I don't know if any of you know this, but my nephew who is 11 just had a heart attack. He lives up in the Seattle area and I am certain he's been affected. He lives in the Puget Sound. He's being blasted by Fukushima. He's exposed to radioactive contamination from Hanford. Their drinking water is contaminated from Hanford. 11 years old having a heart attack. And it's a mystery. It's not a mystery. It's human experimentation. Put your courage feet on you guys. Please take some action. We have to lean on our elected officials not to let them run wild. This is completely outrageous. We've got to stop these people. So, and we can, we can. Ciao.